On Wednesday, October 2nd, I was diagnosed with testicular cancer. I thought, this guy is not going to make it. It's a very dark, dark moment. My condition has spread into my abdomen. Looking at that chest x-ray, I, I didn't think that that person would be alive in the next year. I've never cried a lot, but the last, the last week I, I cry all the time. I realized that if I was given another chance, that I was not going to screw it up. Right now, my tests indicate that there is no cancer. The chest x-rays are absolutely clear. We didn't hear much from Lance for a month or two. We had no idea if, you know, he's going to be able to pull it off. Armstrong's doing great times out on the course. Armstrong here is just lifting his pace. Lance Armstrong is beginning to embarrass everybody. He really is looking like the possible winner of the Tour de France. Well, Lance Armstrong, who 18 months ago was contemplating a bleak future, and now he's staring at the yellow jersey in the face. There was no doubt in my mind Lance would go on to win the Tour de France. It's all coming together again. Armstrong bringing his team home to the line as he comes up to the line. That is absolutely unbelievable. To me, the Tour de France is the single hardest event in sports. I mean, it's like, it's like running a 10,000 meter road race for three straight weeks. The Tour de France is the biggest bike race in the world. It's like, uh, you do this whole year, but everything really comes down to July and performing there. You know, this isn't the Super Bowl. This isn't one two-hour day. This is five, six hours, seven hours for 22 days. An interesting event in that it always changes. The tour is always different. Every year they redesign the tour, but yet the tour always stays the same. Because they always do the Alps, they always do the Pyrenees, they always do some time trials, and they always finish in Paris. It's chaos. 200 riders flying down the road, 40, 45 miles an hour. And all of them are trying to get to the front. And he's jumped away, Zabo up to the front. Virok as well, trying to help out his own. But there's only so much space for, you know, let's say 10 guys in the front. And so a guy's just going everywhere, trying to fight for position and jumping to the front and taking chances, going, you know, jumping over curves and moving up. People would be surprised. They, they don't realize how fast we go on a bike. It's very easy to, to prepare for the Tour de France just with numbers. The weight of the body, the weight of the bike, and the power of the legs. The weight comes down, the power goes up, you're stronger. Not only are they watching their diet and their sleeping habits and their training habits, but during training, they always, in, at least in the Tour, go over every inch of the Tour. You'd think that this is very simple and that every team would do it, but they don't. Lance has ridden every one of these climbs the month or two before he rides it. There's a snow at six kilometers from the top. Oh. Cannot pass. How much snow? A lot. From, from an avalanche. And it's uh, raining at six degrees. You can always have somebody stronger than you. Somebody always has the ability to show up and be better. Those are the variables that you can't, uh, you can't really factor in, but we, can, we have to control the things we can control. And that's our training, that's our preparation, that's the selection of our team, that's the way we lead the team, the way we motivate the team. And then let's just let's throw it out on the table. Cycling, and prof especially professional cycling, is, is a real team sport. There's 200 guys trying to beat up on Lance, and Lance can't control that peloton, or which is the field of 200 guys. And so that's our job, which is to chase after all the guys who are attacking and trying to go up the road and trying to keep him out of the wind. Because the longer you can keep him out of the wind, the fresher his legs will be at the end. You have to look for people that'll work together, people that know each other, that everybody will be willing to sacrifice for each other for the good of the common goal. The fact that Lance prepares his objective so well, really motivates the rest of the team. I just approach it from a very simple level. I love what I do. I attack it with 100% aggression and confidence and fun. And I think that rubs off on the guys. And when it comes time to racing, let's keep it fun. Let's keep it serious. 
and let's win. People love to win. They love to be a part of programs that win. Lance is very straightforward, he's very honest, his integrity is exceedingly high, and so people trust him and they respect him. That's important for a leader. He's also got a lot of compassion inside him. If something's not right and he, you know, and he sees that it's not good for us, even though it might be okay for him, he's the first one to bring it up and say, no, 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 look, we gotta change hotels. This is not gonna work, or we need to do this different. And so he looks out for us because he knows that you know, we're a big part of his success. He's a leader by example. He doesn't ask people to do anything he's not willing to do himself. He's maybe not the strongest, that's possible. It's, it's possible that there's other people who are physically at the same level or maybe a little bit stronger but I'm definitely sure that he's by far the hardest worker. Lance, to prepare your clothes and some tea and stuff. Okay. Okay? What if I keep going? You can't. Huh? You cannot. Three meters of snow. The guy says you can, there's no way you can ride. There's no way. Who says that? I think I want to ride a little more, you know? I'll go down 10 k and come back. That's what it takes to win the tour. Training in this weather. Nobody sees that. To me, it boils down to perspective. You know, when you look at a traffic jam, when you look at a rainy day, when you look at uh, a headache, or a tough bike race, or being 30 minutes down on the Tour de France. I mean, they're all situations that we don't want to be in. It's, it's almost cheating that now I get to come back and, 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 and be given my health back and be given my fitness back and, and to, um, to look at things with different eyes. He shows up for his follow-up, his checkups, and then he moves on, he goes on. And um, it's like sending a butterfly out of your hand off into the sky. They travel, they move, they carry on. And he has done that. This guy is the phoenix that rose up from the ashes. This is the guy that, that shouldn't be alive and then is more alive than anyone.